Welcome, my name is Peter Škoda, and in this video I would like to tell you about our tool for dataset similarity visualization. The rest of this video is structured as follows. First, I briefly describe the problem of the dataset similarity search and highlight some of the main challenges. I will also introduce the concept of explainable similarity and visually explainable similarity. With all the necessary theory covered, I mention some of the key features of our tool. I will close this video with a showcase of our tool. But before we start, let me clarify what exactly is a dataset. Data catalog vocabulary defines dataset as a collection of data published or curated by a single agent and available for access or download in one or more serialization or formats. Data catalog vocabulary also defines a way to provide context or metadata for the dataset. Those metadata are stored in catalogs which allow users to search for datasets. This is where dataset similarity comes into play. In our case, we utilize following metadata, title, keywords, and description. A straightforward approach is to find intersection between the metadata records of two datasets and use the intersection to compute the similarity score. However, there is a major drawback to this approach. Let me demonstrate that on the following example. Here you can see two datasets from Fifth National Open Data Catalog. The first one on the left is called What, When, Where, and contains overview of culture and sports events. The other dataset is called Program of the National Moravian Silesian Theatre and contains program of the theatre. Both datasets capture information about social events, and from this perspective, they are similar. However, the similarity cannot be captured by the straightforward approach mentioned on the previous slide, as there is no intersection between the content of the metadata records. This problem can be solved by using shared context, a solution we proposed in our manuscript from 2019. The main idea of the solution is to utilize a shared context or a knowledge graph. The similarity algorithm then consists of two main steps. In the first step, we map content of the metadata records into the knowledge graph. In the second step, we employ graph-based algorithms to compute the dataset similarity. I give a brief comment on each step on the following slides. Let me start with the first step, mapping. We employ Wikidata as our knowledge graph of choice. For each dataset and Wikidata entity, we consider their metadata records as a descriptors. For example, the Q3778211 has description legal person. From this descriptor, we extract two features, legal and person. We do the same extraction process for the dataset metadata. For example, from legal ownership controls, we extract legal ownership and controls. The feature extraction process may be just a tokenization, but may also include stemming, lemmatization, or use of synonyms. With all the features extracted, we can create a mapping between the dataset and the Wikidata entity. The mapping is defined by the set of shared features. The mapping score is defined as a fraction of shared features count over entity feature count. With the dataset mapped into the knowledge graph or ontology, a dataset similarity can be computed. In this example, dataset A is mapped to blue nodes or entities, and dataset B is mapped to green entities. They share one entity that is mapped from both datasets. We can compute the dataset similarity between dataset A and B, for example, by using the shortest path between the green and blue entities. As a result, we can provide user with a number, the similarity score. In addition, we can also provide user with an image like this one, which provides visual explanation of the similarity score. The visually explainable similarity is already being used in fields like bioinformatics. These similarity models allow users not only to trust and understand the similarity, but also to be an active participant in the process of similarity modeling. From certain perspective, it is not the similarity model that on its own create the final outcome. Instead, the final outcome is created by model user interaction, where the model provides visually explainable results and a user uses them to gain the final outcome. However, as the real data shows, a static image is not enough in our case. On the left side, we see an illustration of how the similarity can be visualized. 
On the right side, we see the visualization of real data as presented in our previous manuscript with manually highlighted red labels. Even with the manual highlight, such image is of a little value to the user. It is thus necessary to provide the user with an interactive way, a tool to visualize, modify, and explore the similarity between the datasets. Such tool may need to be tightly coupled with the similarity model to provide a sufficient functionality. In our case, we expect the tool to not only provide an interactive visualization, but also allow users to modify the mapping or work with the ontology. That is why we designed and implemented Open Dataset Inspector. User can utilize Open Dataset Inspector to gain insight into the dataset similarity. In addition, domain expert can optimize the mapping, similarity, and knowledge graph. The Open Dataset Inspector, ODIN in short, is an open source tool that allows explainable dataset similarity visualization and modeling. As the visually explainable dataset similarity is a new topic, there are no standard visualization techniques. That is why Odin provides three visualization modes. The first, network-based visualization, utilizes a subgraph of the knowledge graph and force field layout. The main drawback is that it is hard to spot the hierarchy in the knowledge graph due to the visual noise. The horizontal tree-based visualization is similar to the network visualization, but utilizes different visual layout to capture the tree-like structure of the knowledge graph. However, if the knowledge graph is too wide, the tree becomes too big to visually comprehend. The vertical tree-based visualization is designed to address the issues with the visual noise and reduce the amount of information shown to the user. I give a short explanation of this visualization on the following slide. On the left, you can see a horizontal visualization of a rooted tree. The root node A stands on the top, with its children B and C underneath it. For small data, this visualization works fine and is very easy to understand. But, as the node fanout becomes too high or the tree becomes too big, the horizontal visualization becomes harder to comprehend. To address those issues, we employ the vertical visualization. You can see the vertical visualization on the same tree on the right side. On the left side, the fact that the given node, for example D, is child of a node C, is visualized by using a line connecting the two nodes. On the right side, we visualize the same by putting the node D inside the node C. So the main idea is to utilize node nesting for visualization of a hierarchy. By limiting the level of detail, in other words, the depth of the visualized subtree, user can easily limit the visible amount of information and thus decrease the mental load. Now, before I continue with the demo, I would like to present you the two datasets that are used in the demo. Both datasets are from Czech National Open Data Catalog. We translated some of the metadata just for purpose of this presentation. The first dataset, named Legally Ownership Controls, contains results in the field of protection of intellectual property rights. The dataset has one keyword with the value controls. The second dataset is called Trademarks Full Export contains national trademark data. The dataset has three keywords with values protective, marked, and UPV. Welcome to Open Data Inspector Visualization Tool. What you can see here is the network-based visualization of a single dataset legal ownership control. Here you can see the three descriptors that are provided with the dataset mapping, of by title, description, and keyword. I can simply toggle on and off the entities that were mapped by a given feature. I can also add the second dataset to get a hint of their similarity. As you can see, the graph is quite large. If we toggle over an entity, we can get a brief description. The yellow entities were mapped by two datasets. In this case, we can see that this is the reduce entity and was mapped by a single feature, a string A. There may be more of that, and we are probably not interested in entities that are mapped by such a short string. So we can go into options, mapping, and provide a custom function that will drop all mappings that are all entities that are mapped by strings shorter than two. 
you can see that the number of mapped entities drop, but it's still not enough. In order to filter them further, we can restrict ourselves only to entities that were mapped directly. As you can see, the number of paths that were detected drops significantly, same as the number of entities. However, it is hard to see a hierarchy in this many nodes. In order to highlight the hierarchy, we can change the view to the horizontal tree visualization. In this visualization, we can see the whole hierarchy visualized as a tree. As you can see, there is a drawback to this visualization. However, if we zoom in, we can read labels and see the nodes. Here we have one of the data set. Here we have the other data set. Now, these words are in check, as these are the features that were mapped to the Wikidata hierarchy. However, if we expand them, we can see the labels of the Wikidata hierarchy that are in English, giving us a rough understanding of what they are mean. We scroll down, you can see that the user can select a path to visualize. For now, I choose to not choose a path, but instead, I select some mappings by the features. For example, I can select law, and on the other side, I can select trademark. As you can see, the law is mapped in here, but it's actually hard to find the other visualization that should be in a blue color. This is the main drawback of the horizontal tree. In order to mitigate that, you can switch into the vertical tree visualization. Where we are looking on the top of the entity. This outer circle is the root, and these are all the nodes inside. The arrows signify mapping of a certain feature in the subtree. Now we can either use the feature lists to select to map something to map, or you can scroll down and select a path. But before we do it, I would like to draw your attention to this level of detail. Level of detail allow you to visualize additional levels of the tree. So for example, now we are seeing two levels down. You can increase the level of detail, but it may decrease the readability of the diagram. So for now, we just stick with two level of details. Now, as you can see, there is plenty of paths available. We decide to reduce the path. As of now, we are using all paths that are shorter than 99. Instead, we may use all paths, only paths that are for only the shortest paths between two nodes that are shorter than four. Now, visually nothing happens, as all what happens is that this list gets a little bit shorter. Now, what we can do here is we can, for example, see this path from law to trademark. Now, before I go back and show the path, we can use this toggle to either see the features that were used to obtain the mapping into the entities, again in check, or the entities labels. Now, if I go up, I see this visualization. This is the law, and inside the law, there are three children, ownership, area of law, and area omens. And in Erga Omens, we have the trademark. So now here, we can visually see the relation between these two features in a hierarchy. Alternatively, we can scroll down and see the whole path visualized down here. Now, we can go back to the network visualization. As the vertical tree visualization is harder to understand. As you can see, in this network visualization, we have no idea about the actual hierarchy. However, we can further experiment with the number of paths. We can decrease the path limit to two, seeing that the number of paths we are using is only nine. That is still a lot. Let's see if we can find some paths that are of size one. We have four paths. However, 
they are not easy to spot. Luckily for us, you can highlight all the nodes that are part of the path that we are using. As you can see, the number of highlighted nodes drops significantly. In this case, there is a node labeled being that is in close proximity to node property and node part. However, the share node in the middle is entity, which is the root of the hierarchy. So it is unlikely that this explains the similarity or capture the similar context between the datasets. In the second case, we have two nodes that are directly connected. The first one is a trademark, and the second one is intellectual property. The entities trademark and intellectual property capture and explain the similarity between the data set. If we look into the Wikipedia, we find out that a trademark is type of intellectual property consisting of something. I would like to end this presentation with a link to a demo that was used in this video and the source code of Open Dataset Inspector that is available at GitHub.